chapter two, depression. Literally a month after the disturbing breakup, we broke the lease and I moved into a new two bedroom apartment on the north side of Pittsburgh. Shit was just different. I was not used to living without a family, daily routine, or being alone majority of the day. And while being lonely, remorseful thoughts flooded my mind. One thing people are attached to is memories of the good times they spent with the significant other, the beginning of the relationship, the moment you two laughed so hard, y'all stomachs were hurting and tears of laughter streamed down, the vacations, the days you were at your lowest and they were there when you desperately needed them by your side, the breathtaking sex, thoughts of cheating crossed my mind and when I got caught, replayed a thousand times. For me, those thoughts brought depression into the story. For the first month, my daily routine was getting up at 5.30 a.m., drinking my Herbalife shake and tea, which supported me to lose 45 pounds, get dressed, then be at the warehouse to load the cargo van up by 6.30 a.m. After I finished my deliveries at 12 p.m., I would run four or five miles depending on the weather or get in the gym for an hour or two. I would come home and cook eat dinner, take a shower, then the remainder of the day, I would sit on the edge of the bed, pondering or scrolling through social media where everybody seemed to be happy. Snapping out of depression was not mindless at this point. I knew I had to get out the house and find happiness somewhere. The streets was calling me. It was time for me to date again because being in the house for 30 to 40 days, I began to rot mentally. I attempted to reach out to my old hoes who would slide in my direct messages from time to time. Two of them had boyfriends. One played and never came over. The other left me on red. My lifetime side bitch got into a serious relationship. There was a time I could say, come through, and she would have passed whatever she was doing to come get this dick. It seemed soon as I got back on the market, not a soul appeared to be interested. When I was a man who was taken... The women was flocking by the dozens. I'm going to share this secret with my men readers while it's on my mind. Find you a beautiful woman, friend. Take her out with you time to time. I bet you will pull the baddest woman in the place. I'm not saying all women, so don't quote me, but most women love competition. When a woman catch sight of a man with an eye-catching woman, his attraction level increases. Trust me when I say this, fellas. It works. Music, please. Thursday night, I decided to step out for the first time since I moved into the apartment. Early in the day, my slick wrist barber awarded me with a razor sharp polished haircut. I was infatuated with myself when I threw jeans and a top on with a pair of white ones and spray cologne on my neck and wrist. At that moment, I felt good about myself for the first time in a long time. I glanced in the body mirror, boosting up the author. You are Tink. You are one handsome man, I said internally. Been a long time since I stepped out alone as a single man. I hyped myself up some more. You are Tink. You are the man. I beat my chest with a ball fist before leaving the apartment. I went to a lounge on the west end of Pittsburgh. Frogs is not a place I normally would prefer to hang out at because the people who are usually there are sometimes weird. You will find a couple beautiful flamingos, but the rest of the women will be frogs and ducks. That's my opinion. Frogs was more of a low-key spot to attend than going to a busy establishment like Arts in the midtown of Pittsburgh. I was not psychologically prepared to be around a crowded scene, even though this night at Frogs was semi-filled. There were a ton of parked vehicles on a busy street. Therefore, I had to park two blocks down from Frogs. Inside the lounge, this place was jumping. All the seats in the bar was taken. The side tables were occupied. But luckily for me, a couple removed themselves from two of the bar stools. Then went into the separate side of Frogs, where there's a dance floor, a DJ, and a bar as well. The beautiful flamingos were out, and so were the ducks. It was wing night, and plus, it was the second to last day of the work week. At this time, I rarely drink, so for a substance, I ordered two glasses of Chardonnay Dry, red wine and sat at the bar pretending to watch the Lakers first Golden State game. As I checked my phone, no mentions, no text messages, my phone was dry as the wine. Sitting alone at the bar, I felt like an outsider. I had no one to speak to. In my mind, I was the awkward guy at the bar gazing at women walk past. 
I knew deep down when the man gave an impression of being thirsty, the women pay that man no type of attention. They will see you as a creep. Men readers, listen to this. If you're sightseeing and happen to get a woman to eyeball you in return, follow the three second rule. You have three seconds to approach the woman you have eye contact with. If not, the longer you stare and smile, stare and smile, or even wave, nine times out of 10, she'll think you're strange. This is where I fucked up at. Sitting fast stools beside me, there were two beautiful women. One was drop dead gorgeous, hazel complexion with beautiful full lips and had stormy gray hair. She looked me dead in my eyes and shot me a smile. I beamed back revealing my gap, then rapidly turned my attention to the television screen across the bar. No doubt, my insides was quivering and my ass was glued to the seat. The conscience in my mind was over speaking the music in frogs. What if she give you the cold shoulder? What are you going to say when you approach her? What if she got a boyfriend? You're about to make yourself look like a fool. The confidence I once had four years ago before getting into a long-term relationship was out right out the window. All the chest beating and gassing myself up before entering frogs deflated. I was terrified. Want another glass of wine? The bartender asked. Either she knew I was panicky or she felt bad I was sitting alone. Yes, what I owe you, I replied. Someone bought you a drink, the snow white bartender said, then scrambled around the bar to pour drinks. I caught sight of Stormy again. This time her friend was not sitting with her. This was my opportunity to prove myself wrong. You got this. You got this. Stormy was occupied with her phone. She probably felt me burning a hole in her neck with my eyes. Go, Tink. You got this. I pushed myself some more as the bartender sat the wine on the napkin. Thanks, and please tell whoever bought this for me. Thank you. I will. As soon as the bartender disappeared, my left foot tapped the ground. I could do this. I spoke to myself. Right as the rubber of my soles touched the surface, the friend appeared. Stormy stood up from her chair, grasped her belongings, then began to stroll towards the exit. Before departing, she waved, then vanished out the door. I allowed my self-esteem to get in the way. I allowed rejection to put fear in my heart. I allowed my thoughts to cloud my mind with negativity. At this time, I knew I had to work on myself. Soon after Stormy left, my confidence was at an all-time low. I could not stand frogs for another second. Leaving the lounge, my vehicle was parked quite distant. I had three glasses of wine. As a result, I was sort of intoxicated. I noticed someone four or five feet away from me walking in the same direction. I didn't see harm in this guy, so I didn't consider closely because there were other vehicles parked behind mine. When I stepped inside my car, the man following behind opened the passenger door. Hey, I bought you those drinks. Hey, man, if you don't shut my fucking door, I'm going to shoot you. I reached under my seat. I just want to suck your dick. He stepped back in fear after slamming the door. When I pulled off, I shed tears the whole ride home. At this time, I was at my absolutely worst. Like most movies, when hard times occur, the script usually had the main character revisit their past. Said character could not reach his goals because something ruined his master plan. The character was near success, but fell short. He get depressed, then come to the conclusion to land at his old job, the place where he absolutely despite. I was that character at the time. I wanted my ex fiance back. The next morning, I sent a text and it read, Good morning, hey. We should get a workout in, take a jog at the reservoir or something. I knew she was a health freak. The scheme was to give attention to her interests without displaying desperation. At the core of it all, I wasn't going to beg or discuss the dead and buried. When you beg, your weakness will be exposed. Most of the time, when this happens, you get shut down swiftly. Your feelings will be damaged and your heart will get Kurt Franklin stone. Just enjoy yourself. Allow the energy to flow naturally between you both. And don't overly bend over backwards because you'll seem like a fraud and resemble a goofball. When it comes down to winning back your old lady, be yourself. Be consistent. Do the shit you say you're going to do. But don't bag her every day with the, 
what you doing, can I see you, text. She's still in the healing process. Give her space, even if you two lived it up. Slightly fall back and compel her to miss your presence. Surprisingly, she agreed. We planned to go running the very next day. Wednesday evening, it was a beautiful spring day. People were jogging, riding bikes, skating, walking, walking their dogs, families with children, the elders pacing around cherishing the weather. A lap around the reservoir is a full mile. We jogged around twice, the third one we walked. As we took our last stroll, we exchanged small talk conversation, plans for our child, business plans, and a whole lot of nothing. When we finished walking the mile, I escorted her to the car. I know who she is. You fucked her, Darren. No, I didn't, was my line of response. Well, Roland said you told him you did. He has no reason to lie. I never said nothing to him about nobody. They just don't want to see us together because they're having problems in their own relationship. Roland was my ex-fiance's friend's husband. We became close within the four years of my relationship. During football season, we watched Steeler games, attend a few bitter, cold winter games, exchanged business plans, and went on double dates in and out of town with our ladies. Other than my brother Devin or my childhood friends Wade or Carlos, the solid men I trust with my life, Roland was a friend I was built in trust with. Since we both were in relationships, the conversation were different than me talking to my single friends. When we spoke, it was similar to visiting a therapist. If I had any issues at home in my relationship, he was the person I called to vent to, vice versa. He spoke on a ton of dilemmas he had with his lady or outside deceiving shit he brought to the conclusion. As a man, my mouth will be forever concealed and his words will always be locked in my soul, even if we're not friends. My mistake was believing that the guy code was obeyed by every man. After getting caught a week later, Roland and I gave voice on the entanglement on his living room sofa. I exposed the woman's Instagram page. I described the sexual act between the woman and I, and I clarified the reason for my action on my part. When I reflect on bragging about the woman I slept with, this is the corniest shit I could have done. Apart from getting caught, this is an unmanly behavior because boasting on new pussy cost me fully. Never tell a married man or a man deep in the relationship your infidelities. These men are known for pillow talking. All the info shared was passed to his woman, then to my ex. The guy code was thoroughly broken. There was no chance of myself getting back in good hands. She knew the full story. Added to that, there was a face to paint the picture clearly. After the day we jogged, Two weeks later, I invited my ex-fiance to DC Young Fly's comedy show for her birthday. The night was flaunishing. We both were dressed prevailing, and DC Young Fly had us rolling out our seats with jokes after jokes. A good laugh purposely bring attention out of some situations. When the show was over, I dropped her off, picked up our child while she went out for her birthday. It was Friday night, and Saturday morning, I had to attend work at 5 a.m., so I had to drop my child off whenever she arrived home. At 1 a.m., again, she mentioned Cassidy. I was in the car talking to Tasha. We called Roland, and he said, you fucked that girl. This time, I felt Roland gave full detail straight from his lips. Why are we talking about this again? I thought we're past this. We're not. You want me to call him? For what? I said as her phone rang on the speaker. Hello? Roland, did Darren fuck that girl? She asked, staring me down. Yup, he said without a care. She hung the phone up. Just leave me alone. The only way you could get back with me, you have to stop writing, give me your password, and give me the keys to your apartment. None of those options was happening, so it was over. It was time to return back to the drawing board.